The whole night long I slept with you, next to the sea, on the island. You were wild and gentle, between pleasure and dreams, between fire and water, whispers and screams. This is Kenya, and this little island right here along the southern coast is Mombasa. We take this giant coffee pot as our starting point, sitting right at the junction between Kuruma Road, Ndiaku Road, and Sambara Kinawi Road. To the south we have Fort Jesus, a Portuguese military fortification built in the late 16th century. We will be heading north, however, into the heart of Mombasa Old Town. But before that, let's talk about these giant utensils in the middle of the street. This work of art is the Kahawa Monument, built in 1988. The pot and three Arabian coffee cups are a metaphor of bringing people together to share a cup of coffee. You see, the city-state of Mombasa rose to global prominence in the 15th century. It was a strategic port for the Indian Ocean trade, which saw the intermixing of African, Indian, Arab and European influences. This sculpture, I believe, is a symbol of Mombasa's cosmopolitan character. It's a brew of different ingredients. It's bitter, sweet, bland and spicy coming together to create a unique flavor, a unique identity. The Kahawa Monument was gifted to Mombasa County by Burhan Ali Taher, who was once the owner of Ali's Curio Shop, our next stop. It was built in 1898 as the first police station in Mombasa, later turned into a bar, the Nazareth Bar, and now acts as a curio shop. As with most old town buildings, its walls are made of coral stone, or coral rag to be more precise, a limestone rock formed from the ancient coral reef which is abundant along the coast of East Africa. Notice the wooden balcony, a salient feature of Swahili architecture, propped up by large wooden brackets that transfer the balcony's weight onto the load-bearing walls. Look at the decorative wooden trim, just barely hanging on. Notice the rhythm created by the false arches, the brackets and the balustrade. Zooming in, we get a glance at its wooden doorway, embellished with floral motifs and Arabic inscriptions. We'll discuss this in greater detail later. Mombasa town, since antiquity, has always been a collage of cultures, a tapestry of ideas from Africa and the entire world, and the architecture bears testimony to these interactions. Here we see a quaint Victorian house, complete with stone coins and arched windows, and a Swahili balcony seemingly glued onto the front facade. These balconies provide a private intimate space for the family, while providing a view of the outside. On the opposite side of the room, we have a much more minimalist approach to design. A bare wall punctured by rectangle windows with metal shutters. The White House was built towards the end of the 18th century by Ismaili Jivanji. It was rented to the Church Missionary Society as a ladies' house for unmarried lady missionaries or nuns from 1893 to 1904. By 1909, the building was used as the premises of an American firm known as Arnold Cheney, dealing with ivory trade. It then became the first American consulate in Kenya from 1915 to 1918. This time, the elaborate balconies are replaced by more modest awnings, which shade the windows from direct sunlight. Let's take a closer look at the door. On the semicircular top panel are Arabic inscriptions. The frame is embellished with floral patterns, while the panels are left bare, with only iron studs to hold them together. Such a profusion of decoration is usually associated with wealth and power and this is especially true for Swahili buildings. The doors were made of the finest hardwoods, especially teak and mahogany, and took skilled craftspeople up to six months to make. They were a status symbol, in the truest sense of the word. Richard Francis Burton, a 19th century British explorer, had this to say about the doors. The higher the tenement, the bigger the gateway, the heavier the padlock and the huger the iron studs, which nailed the door to the heavy timber, the greater the owner's dignity. Looking at Mombasa House, built in 1880, we begin to see a pattern emerge. Beautifully carved wooden doors, an ornate balcony with delicately carved geometric and floral patterns, two or three story tall buildings, coral stone walls plastered with lime and painted white, yellow or orange, and corrugated iron roofs that shed off the rain. It's all there, still standing, over a century later. Mombasa, being a strategic trading hub and administrative center, has a history of war and invasions. The winding nature of the streets is said to have confused invaders, providing no clear lines of sight and leaving them vulnerable to attack from practically any direction. The roads of Old Town are narrow and irregular. Often, barely two cars can fit side by side. But then again, these roads were not built for cars. They were built for people, pedestrians, and the occasional donkey cart. Often, there are no setbacks on the road. Where the building ends is where the road begins. 
The narrowness of these streets allows them to be shaded from the tropical sun by the low-rise buildings. Through the winding alleys, we make our way to Government Square, a grand open space providing a moment of relief from the narrow alleyways. Have a look at the old post office, opened in 1899. This post office enabled the Indians, who built the railway running from Mombasa in Kenya to Kampala in Uganda, to send news back to home to their families. The rich white plaster work on these walls is more common in interiors, and it's an art that very few people today have mastered. Up ahead is Forodhani restaurant. While not as ancient as the rest of old time, it sits in perfect harmony with its surroundings. The seafront restaurant allows us to transition seamlessly into Sambara Hinawi Street, named after Sheikh Mbarak Al Hinawi, who became the Liwali, the governor of Mombasa in 1937. Here we find the Mandiri Mosque, the oldest mosque still in operation in the Old Town area. Built in 1570, it's astonishing how well this building has been preserved over 450 plus years. It has a round minaret. The minaret is the tower in or adjacent to mosques from which Muslim calls to prayer are made. It has two mirabs, that's the niche on the wall, pointing in the direction of Mecca, where Muslims face when praying. This only stone structure, opposite the Mandiri Mosque, is the Mandiri Well, used for ablutions. The Africa Hotel, opened in 1901, housed 12 bedrooms, which once had direct views of the sea. Right next to it is the Swahili Resource Center, opened by Professor Ali Mazri, Kenyan-American political scientist, poet and historian, in 2005. His work on African heritage studies earned him both fame and massive public scrutiny. He was buried in the Mazri family graveyard, which is back where we started our journey, along Diaku, a stone's throw away from the coffee pot. The story of Old Town is not one of run-down buildings, but the people and the lives they lived in these buildings. It's a story that continues to inspire architecture, to influence culture, to spark debate, and to guide us into an unknown future. Architecture is basically a container for something. I hope that you have enjoyed not so much the coffee cup, but the coffee. If you liked it, share it. I'll see you later.